Last week, social media was a buzz with the controversy surrounding Q8 influencer Sondos Alcatan and her comments regarding Q8 rules on Filipina domestic workers. What can influencers and brands learn from the week that she's had? To find out more, I'm here with Bern de Boosman. You're watching Inside AB, I'm Jeremy Lawrence. Okay, Burns, welcome. Um, just recap on the week and why everyone's so upset with the comments that she made. Well, her problems began on July 10th when she posted a video in which she said essentially that she doesn't like new Kuwaiti regulations about Filipino domestic workers. She's, uh, she said personally she doesn't think they should get one day off a week and she disagrees with the policy that the worker can retain their own passport. In, okay. in her view, they'll run off with the passport and just leave. Um, so, I mean, that um, caused quite a bit of stir, but it probably would have gone away, but then she reiterated her comments two, three, four times. Uh, she didn't under she said she didn't understand why everyone was attacking those comments. Um, she, she went on to say she thought it was an attack on Kuwait and on the Gulf as a whole. Um, so it just kind of got worse and worse from a PR perspective over the week. Of course, and we should say that the backdrop to all this is that Q8 changed the rules recently after the diplomatic spat that happened following the murder of the Filipino domestic workers in Q8. Yeah, that was a top level um, spat, like you said, between the Philippines. And at, at one point they were even offering to fly all the Filipinos home for free from Kuwait. Uh, right, which led to these rule changes, which led to these complaints from Sonos Alcatam. Indeed. So the influence, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Sondas, she gets paid to, to advertise brands. These brands aren't very happy, right? No, and quite a few of the brands um, have dropped or severed ties with her. Um, some of them did so right away. Some of them took a little longer and people were starting to wonder why, um, you know, because it became an international story. So people were getting in touch with these brands at their main offices, for example, in the UK or in the US. Uh, but quite a few of them have severed ties with her. Uh, Chelsea Boutique, which is based in London for one, for example, said that they believe that decent working conditions should be provided to everyone and such behavior doesn't represent the brand's core beliefs. Um, similar versions of that statement went out by a lot of brands. Mm. Uh, but the brands that were a bit slow or still haven't responded to, to what happened, um, they're getting a lot of heat on social media from their own customers, um, which is... It's interesting because it shows you know how much power the customer has on social media. Yeah, yeah, which leads to the next question, which is what influencers and brands can learn from this episode. Well, I mean, uh, I, I suppose one one lesson, of course, is that a brand never really knows what an influencer will do or, or yeah. a personality. Um, so you know, it behooves them before they start funneling resources into um, personality marketing, I guess you could call it, mm. to really be careful about who they work with because you, you don't want to be in an embarrassing spot where you have to sever ties with someone that you've been working with. And we saw this a few months ago when we talked about Logan Paul, of course, being here in Dubai. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, and that's just one of the examples. If you want to branch out into athletes, for example, Tiger Woods, I mean, he many sponsors dropped him after yeah. his accident and his infidelities. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, this is something that's happened quite frequently, but I think it's taking a while for companies to really understand. And does it not show as well from what you said before that these stories can run away with themselves and that the brands have got to be ready to have a response. They can't, not responding is, is not a way to deal with this. No, I mean, uh, news, bad news or good news travels very fast on Twitter and on Instagram. So, I mean, this week just showed that brands need to, if something happens to be ready. kind of ahead of the game, yeah. Uh, because like I said, the brands that were a bit slow, um, like MAC Cosmetics, for example, they were a bit slow to respond to people asking why they haven't severed ties with um, Miss Al-Katan. And, um, you know, it, it was an embarrassment for them as a brand because, you know, it, everything they would do online was just followed by dozens of comments about this. Mm. Uh, why haven't you said anything yet? Where's the response, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Well, this story seems to be running, so uh, we'll we'll keep everyone posted with the details. Thank you, Burns. You've been watching Inside AB. Please do join us every weekday at 10 a.m. Subscribe, comment, and share, and we'll see you next time. Bye.